welcome back to the course on uh, computer network and internet protocol. Uh, so, today we will see some demo of uh, network programming. So, we will look into the socket programming in details and see that uh, with the help of socket programming, how you can access the uh, transport layer of the protocol stack and you can run your own application on top of the network protocol stack to transfer some data uh, to or from a computer. Uh, so, let us uh, start our journey in the socket programming. So, uh, to start with uh, as uh, we have seen earlier or we have also discussed earlier that uh, this entire network protocol stack uh, is uh, implemented inside the kernel of the operating system. So, in general we have uh, 5 layers in the TCP IP protocol stack uh, that uh, we have talked about. And uh, in that 5 layers of the TCP IP protocol stack, this physical layer and a part of the data link layer are stored inside the hardware. Whereas, the upper part of the data link layer, uh, mainly a part of the MAC and the logical link control, the network layer and the transport layer, they are implemented inside the kernel space of operating system. And then from the user space, you can write multiple application to access this uh, protocol stack. Uh, so, the application have to interact with the transport layer to send or receive data and as we have learned already that uh, in the transport layer we have two different uh, protocols the transmission control protocol or the TCP and the user datagram protocol or UDP. So, uh, today we will look into that uh, this uh, entire kernel space uh, uh, which is there inside that we have this different layers of the protocol stack the transport layer, network layer and a part of the data link layer uh, which is already implemented uh, inside the operating system kernel and we will see that how you can make a interaction between this user space and the protocol stack which is implemented inside the kernel space uh, with the help of the socket programming. Uh, now, interestingly what we will see that whenever you will write a application network application at the user space, uh, you have to transfer or you have to use certain kind of functionalities which are available at the kernel. So, you require an interfacing between the user space and the kernel space and remember that here we are talking about a Unix based operating system uh, and in a Unix based operating system uh, from the user space to kernel space that interaction will be done uh, with a set of APIs which we call as the system call. So, this system call transfers some user requirement to the kernel corresponding kernel operations and perform the operations at the uh, Linux or Unix kernel. Uh, so, this entire protocol stack that is implemented inside the kernel, uh, we will make uh, an interaction with that network protocol stack with the help of the operating system system calls. So, uh, interestingly, just a pointer for you uh, to explore further that you can look into this entire protocol stack implementation inside a Unix kernel. Uh, if you download the Unix kernel source inside the Unix kernel source, you can check the net module under user source Linux net and you can see this entire implementation of the kernel protocol stack there. So, uh, these things we have already learned about that uh, this TCP IP protocol stack at the transport layer it does application layer multiplexing. You can run multiple application in different devices. Now, different application can run different uh, type of protocols. So, if you are having a browsing or HTTP application that will run TCP. Uh, if you have a file transfer or FTP kind of application that may again run TCP. If you have some application like VoIP that may use UDP. Now, all these different uh, transport layer instances of the protocol stack that interact with the IP layer. Now, whenever you are talking among two devices, the IP layer gets changed and uh, whenever you are having multiple applications which are running uh, on top of your uh, IP layer or the network layer of the protocol stack, uh, they are multiplexed uh, with the help of uh, different type of protocol. So, uh, to differentiate between two devices at the IP layer. Uh, we use this IP address uh, in the subsequent lecture whenever we discuss about um, IP layer, we will discuss about how you can configure this IP addresses. So, for the time being just understand that uh, different devices they are separated by the IP addresses and then uh, at the application side, uh, we have 
these port numbers that actually help you to do the application layer multiplexing. So, that means whenever we talk about that device A is communicating with device B during that time it is actually uh, if you are doing some kind of browsing application which is using HTTP protocol during that time uh, the, the device A uh, the application which is using the TCP protocol at a port 8081 on the machine with IP address 202.141.812 uh, it is interacting with the device B at uh, IP address 203.12.23.43 over a port 8080 where your HTTP server is running. Similarly, for the other application that way this application running at device A or the application running at device B they can be segregated with the help of that port number. And remember that whenever we talk about this kind of application in a Unix based system we basically uh, represent it in the form of a process. So, there are multiple processes which are running in different machines and those processes want to communicate with each other and during that time uh, we make or we ensure this process to process communication with the help of the transport layer of the protocol stack. So, this process to process communication is achieved with the help of this uh, IP address which is there at the IP layer to uniquely identify a machine in the network and then in a machine there are multiple processes running they can use different protocols some of the processes may use TCP protocol some of the processes may use UDP protocol. So, that are segregated with the help of the port numbers. Now, let us see what is a socket. So, socket is basically a logical connection from one process to another process. So, here you can see that these two browsing applications at the two devices they are communicating with each other. So, uh, we have uh, the socket one socket this red socket which is making a logical pipe between the application which is running at port 8081 on the machine 202.141.81.2 to a machine uh, uh, where the corresponding end of that pipe is running at a port 8080 at a machine with IP address 203.12.23.43. So, that way uh, we can have multiple such logical pipes uh, at the transport layer which we call as the socket. Now, sending the data over the internet means sending the data over these logical pipes. So, these logical pipes uh, which we call as the socket they basically creates this end to end uh, connection in case of TCP or end to end data transmission semantics in case of UDP to transfer the data from uh, one machine or better to say one process running at one machine to another process running at another machine. So, here let us see that uh, how we can implement such a socket in a uh, Unix based system. So, for that we use this concept of socket programming. So, in a socket programming framework we have a set of system calls that we can execute from the C program uh, and uh, this system calls will help us to get the service from the RTCP IP protocol stack uh, which is implemented inside the net module of the OS kernel. So, let us see that uh, how this entire thing works. Uh, so, uh, at the transport layer uh, we are talking about a client server based programming. So, we have a server where uh, the idea is that the server has uh, opened a port announced a port that at this particular port I am listening and the client need to make a connection to that particular port. Now, in that case how the server actually works. So, in the server side uh, you have to first make a socket system call. So, this socket system call it will create the server side opening of the logical pipe and it will bind the socket with your uh, TCP IP protocol stack. So, to bind the socket with the TCP IP protocol stack you have to call this bind function. So, this bind function what it will do that uh, with the port number that you are specifying uh, it will bind that port number with the socket. So, that way it will create a logical end uh, of the connection at the server side. So, uh, just think of the server in this way that the server is always running and uh, the server actually need to announce that hey I am actually listening in this particular port say port 8080. So, if anyone wants to talk to me uh, you can send data at the port 8080. So, this announcement uh, you have to done through this bind and the listen 
system call that we have here. So, the bind system call actually bind the port uh, with the corresponding socket end and the listen system call will help you the, to make the server to go in the listening state. So, the server is now say bind at port 8080 and it, it is listening for the incoming connection. Now, let us move at the client side. At the client side, you have this socket system call. So, this socket system call again create a client side end of the logical pipe and after that at the client side, you do not require this bind and listen because just understand the nature of the communication between the server and the client. So, the server is actually announcing or making an announcement that hey, I am listening at this port 8080. So, anyone wants to connect to me, you can directly connect to me at port 8080 that the client do not need to know because the client is actually initiating the uh, initiating the connection to the server. Because the client is initiating the connection to the server, the client do not need to make such kind of announcement. So, the client can just initiate the connection to the port which is being announced by the server and that is why uh, you do not require the bind and the listen call at the client side. So, at the server side, you require the bind and the listen call so that the server can bind itself to a uh, port to a fixed port and it can announce that fixed port to the outside that anyone can connect to that particular port uh, by creating a socket. Now, after these things are done, after you have created the end of the socket at the client side, from the client side you make this connect call to initiate a connection to the port number which is announced by the server. Now, that is actually a kind of well known things like say you know that if you are running a HTTP server then um, you are uh, either running at port 80 or you are running at port 8080 or some other ports which is being announced by the server. So, the client already knows that what is the IP address where the server is running and what is the port number where the serv uh, server is running. So, the client initiate a connect call there and this connect makes a connection towards the server. So, once the server gets this connection, it makes a accept call. Now, in case of a TCP kind of protocol, within that connect and accept, you have the TCP three-way handshaking procedure that we have discussed. So, the client initiates the connection by sending a SYN packet, the server accepts the connection by returning back an ACK and also initiating the connection to the client side by sending another SYN. So, we are having a SYN plus ACK from the server to the client and then finally, the client sends an acknowledgement. So, that way through this three way handshaking of TCP uh, which happens whenever you are making this connect system call at the client side and the accept call at the server side to make the connection in case of a TCP. Now, once this connection is established, then you can make this send and the receive call to send the data and receive the data. So, whenever you are making a send call, it is sending the data at the other end you can receive that data by making a receive system call or you can make a send um, to the from the server side to send some data from the server to the client and the client accept that data from this receive system call. So, once this data communication is done, then you make this uh, close call, uh, finally the close call to uh, close the corresponding connection. So, that way uh, uh, this entire flow of socket programming works. Now, let us look into that how you will actually write this system call uh, in the format of a C syntax. So, we will start uh, with different type of sockets uh, as we have discussed long back that uh, the internet is a trade off between performance and reliability and that is why we have two different protocols at the transport layer the transmission control protocol or TCP or the user datagram protocol and the UDP. Now, some application they require fine grain performance like the multimedia applications and some others requires reliability like a file transfer and accordingly we have two services like a reliable transmission protocol uh, or TCP kind of protocol and the unreliable transmission protocol like a, which is the UDP protocol. Now, accordingly we have these two different type of sockets. One socket we call as the stream socket, which is initiated by SOC stream. So, this SOC stream is create a socket which is reliable and connection oriented. So, it is necessarily a TCP kind of socket. On the other hand, we have this UDP based socket which is unreliable and connectionless uh, that we call as a datagram socket, which is termed as SOCDigram. 
So, that way we have two broad kind of socket stream socket and the datagram so socket. Apart from that we have a third kind of socket that is called raw socket using the raw socket you can actually bypass the uh, transport layer and you can directly inter uh, interact with the IP layer. So, we will not going to discuss this raw socket here in details, we are going to give you an overview about this stream socket and the datagram socket. Now, whenever you are declaring a socket, so what you can do, you can declare a vari variable called integer s, uh, integer type of variable which hold the socket id that you are going to define. So, this socket system call, it takes these parameters, three parameters, the domain, type and the protocol. Now, it create a socket uh, with this socket system call. Now, this domain parameter, it is the communication domain. Normally, we use IPv4 protocol or IPv4 uh, address. So, we set uh, this domain value as f underscore i net, uh, which is a standard uh, for the time being most of the time you will use f i net. Uh, you can always explore what are the other possibilities in this domain field. Then the type of the field, it is type of the socket either sock stream or sock datagram based on whether you are going to create a TCP socket or a UDP socket and finally, the protocol specifies the protocol family that we are going to use usually it is set to 0. So, I will suggest you to explore this that why we set uh, the protocol field at uh, 0 in most of the cases. Now, once this socket system call is done you have created the socket at the server side you have to create the next call is the bind to bind the port to the uh, particular socket. So, this bind system call works in this way, uh, it returns a status whether the bind is successful or not. Uh, so, uh, you can have this status as a integer variable and the bind takes three parameter the socket id, the socket id that is written by this uh, socket system call uh, and uh, yeah the socket id that is written by this socket system call. So, this, uh, this s value is the socket id which has been returned that you can put here. Now, that particular socket is bind to a address port uh, kind of variable which is a structure. Uh, so, this structure contains the struct socket id are in. So, this structure contains the IP address and the port of the machine. So, usually we set to in edit or any uh, to choose a local address. So, if you are run it as in a DDR any, it will choose the IP address which is used by your machine and then the size. So, the size is the address size of the, this socket DDR uh, structure. Uh, so, the socket DDR structure looks something like this uh, which actually stores the IP address and the corresponding port number. It has these three fields, one is the SIN family. So, this is, this is the address family. So, the address family we keep it as AFI net uh, for IPv4 protocol which we are going to use. So, this concept of IPv4 we are going to discuss uh, in the subsequent lectures when we talk about the IP addressing scheme. So, normally in general in today's network we mostly use the IPv4 address. So, the address family is normally set to AFI net. Then we have this uh, socket in address dot SADDR it is the source address. So, the source address we keep it as in a DDR any as I have mentioned to choose the local address of the machine where I am running the code and then I have the port number in the variable sin port the port number. So, now uh, one interesting fact is here that we need to use this function called h2ns uh, to convert the port number from host byte order to network byte order. Now, let us look it quickly that what is this host byte order and the network byte order. Uh, so, uh, in a computer system, the computer can be of two type, either it can be a little endian system or it can be a big endian system. Now, the difference between a little endian system or a big endian system is something like this, uh, it is like how you are storing the data in the memory. Now, in case of a little endian system, you will store the data from left to right, uh, sorry from right to left. So, this 0 d will be stored first, then it will store 0 c, then it will store 0 b and finally, it will store 0f. Whereas, in a big endian system, it is just the opposite. So, it is a left to right uh, associativity kind of thing. So, uh, in a register, if your data is something like this, in the memory, it will first store 0a, then it will store 0b, then it will store 0c and finally, it will store 0d. So, that way, 
depending on whether your machine is following a little Indian platform or a big Indian platform, the representation of the data inside the memory may get changed. So, assume a communication from a little Indian to a big Indian system. Now, if you are transferring data from a little Indian system, you will transfer the data in the form of a byte stream uh, in the sequence of bytes. So, you will first send possibly 0 D, then 0 C, then 0 B, then 0 A and whenever it, the big Indian system will get 0 D, it will put the 0 D first, then the 0 C second and that way whenever it will interpret, it will interpret the number just in the opposite direction. So, uh, that way there may be a kind of inconsistency whenever you are transferring the system. So, that is why we use this concept of host byte order to the network byte order. The idea is that the host uh, can be little Indian or a big Indian, they have a kind of byte order. Now, network is a has a fixed byte order. So, whenever you are transferring the data over the network, you convert it from the host byte order to the network byte order, transfer it over the network at the other end, you fetch the data, convert it again to the host byte order based on whether the, your system is little Indian or big Indian and store it there. So, that way this kind of inconsistency which may come due to the representation difference of two machines that can be solved. So, that is the idea of uh, converting the port number from the host byte order to the network byte order. So, here is an example how you can initiate the uh, address variable. So, you set up the port at 3028 uh, which is you are taking it as an integer variable. Uh, then you have this sin family a phi net that I have discussed sin address dot address is in a ddr any to take the local address. If you want you can also put some IP address there, but that IP address need to be matched with the IP address used by your network interface. And then in the sin port you make this call to h 2 ns over the port number to convert it to the network byte order. Well, uh, now to accept a socket connection. So, you in the uh, client side you create a client address. Now, the server uh, it is listening on this particular socket. So, this listen function has a parameter called 5 here. So, this particular parameter indicates that how many maximum connection can be backlogged when multiple clients are trying to connect to the server. And then you uh, take this uh, size of this address variable that you have declared and make a accept call. So, this accept call will take the SOC FD where the socket is listening, the client address that will be provided. So, when the client will get connected, the address of the client will get stored in this variable and the length of that client address. Now, this accept call uh, whenever you are initiating a connection, uh, as I have mentioned that the server need to always in the uh, mode uh, where it is waiting for any incoming connection and the clients need to initiate the connection. So, accordingly we have two kind of connection called active open and the passive open. Now, as I have mentioned that the server needs to announce its address remain in the open state and waits for any incoming connection. So, that is the kind of passive open and the client it only opens the connection where there is a need for data transfer that is the kind of active open and the connection it is initialized by the client. Now, these are the uh, data transfer format. So, we have two different type of socket the stream socket and the datagram socket. In case of a stream socket, you can use the function called read and write by providing the socket identifier. So, uh, here is an interesting fact that whenever you are accepting a connection, you are getting a new socket ID. So, why you are getting a new socket ID? Because the server is listening on one socket. Now, when the client is initiating, there can be multiple clients which are connecting simultaneously. Now, when multiple clients are connecting simultaneously, you need to create separate logical pipe to separate client. So, that are actually indicated by the socket address which is written by this accept system call. So, the accept system call will return an address and that particular address will be assigned to the uh, new SOC FD and while you are sending the data, uh, you use that new socket ID because that has created the end to end stream or end to end pipe to a specific client and you will send a message. So, for the stream kind of socket, you can use the uh, read and the write function to read data from a buffer or to write data to a buffer. For the datagram socket, you can use the function called receive from and send to uh, receive from function to receive data from the socket or send to function to send data 
to that particular socket. Now here are some, so I will show you some demo of the entire thing. So here are uh, some link that you can follow to learn socket programming in more details. Uh, so what I will suggest you to go to these particular links and uh, start writing your own network programming using the socket. So let us uh, quickly go uh, to some demo of this uh, entire uh, idea of uh, socket programming. Uh, so we will first uh, look into uh, UDP server and the corresponding UDP client. So let us uh, open the look into the UDP server first. So So, here is uh, your code for the UDP server. So, in the UDP server code, you can see that we have uh, included some header. Uh, these are the kind of standard headers that uh, we have to include. And then inside the main function, we are declaring the entire thing. So, uh, in the main function, we have this uh, uh, we are first defining a socket uh, which is the struct socket ADR in and the corresponding server address. Then uh, we are defining a socket identifier and uh, we are defining a port number. Now here uh, this uh, we are first making a socket system call. In the socket system call you have this uh, AFI net the parameter that uh, we have mentioned we need to specify the datagram socket we are specifying because we are trying to create a UDP socket and the final parameter is equal to 0. Uh, the 0 parameter that we send for the protocol field that we have mentioned. Then once the socket is created if there is an error we print some error message otherwise uh, we uh, declare the server address uh, as we have uh, discussed earlier. So, we declare it as uh, the fa protocol family as AFI net, the address as in a DDR any, we take the address of this machine and then the port number. Then we make the bind system call, the bind system call is to bind uh, the socket with uh, the corresponding port number that uh, we are specifying as a command line argument. And uh, finally, we, we make a call to a function called set sock opt. This set sock opt is to set some option to the socket. Here we have set the option so underscore reuse addr. Uh, this so underscore reuse addr will help us to use the same port uh, for uh, multiple connections together. And uh, uh, that is not a safe idea, but uh, sometime you can use that. Then after that we are uh, declaring the buffer where we will store the data. Uh, we are declaring the receive buffer and the length of the data. We are again declaring a address for the client that we have shown the uh, address where the client variable will get stored. And uh, after that, uh, we are making this receive from function. Now, you see for the uh, UDP case, we do not create any connection. So, we do not require this connect and the accept call. So, the connect and the accept call are specific to the uh, TCP server. For the UDP server, you do not require the connect and the accept call uh, because uh, we do not have a connection establishment in case of UDP. So, what you can do once you have created the, the socket at the server side, you can directly make the call uh, to the receive from function to receive the data and this receive from function will contain the client details. So, this is the client address which is here in the receive from function. And once you are receiving data, we are printing some data and making a send to call. So, this send to call is sending the data to the uh, corresponding client. So, that is the code at the uh, server side. Now, uh, let us uh, open the client side code. for the UDP. So, this is the client side code for the UDP. Uh, at the client side, we do in the same way, we declare the address, uh, the server address where we want to connect. 
So then uh, from the command line, we take the host name and the port, the host name of the name of the server and the port address where the server is uh, getting binded. Then we create a socket uh, with a finite and as a datagram socket at the client side as well. Then we get the server IP. After that, we are creating the server address by uh, using that setting this in family, the host address and the server port. So, the values which are being provided by the, uh, by the client at the, through the command line. So, after that once you have got the server address again you do not need to initiate a connection you can directly make the send to call to send some data. So, from here we are making a send to call. So, this send to call is sending the data to the particular socket with uh, this uh, server address which are, we are specifying here and uh, after that you are sending the data we are receiving certain data. Uh, so, we are sending the data from the client as this message hello dear and uh, from the client side we are uh, receiving the data. So, we are receiving the data uh, in the in the form of what is written back by the sender we have declared a temporary character buffer here a string here string buffer here and we have make this uh, receive from call to receive the data from the uh, client side uh, from the server side. So, here the server address is being provided. So, that is uh, and then we are printing the data here. Uh, so, that is uh, the client side code. Uh, now, let us run the server and the client side code here in the same machine we are running the server side code and the client side code. So, first let us compile the server code and the client code. So, now um, let us first run the server. So, according to our syntax we are, that is we have to run the server and specify a port address where the server will uh, connect itself the bind through the bind system call. So, let us give the port number as 2333. So, the server is now running. Now, from the client side uh, we can run the client and we are running the server in the same machine. So, the host name of the server we can give it as localhost and we are running the server at the port 2333 uh, at port 2333. So, we can provide the server port as 2333. So, it has sent the message to the server you can see that the server has received the message from the client and uh, it is returning back that message. So, the client has received the message and printed it. So, you can again run the uh, client and you can see that it has received the message. Now, note the note one thing here we are printing the server IP the client IP and the client port the client IP is the local IP of this machine and the client port whenever we are running multiple client the client port gets changed. Now, at the client side as the client do not bind itself to a well known port during the run time the client randomly chooses one port address and uh, initiate the client uh, transfer from that particular port address. So, that is why a different run the port address gets changed. So, if I run it again multiple time at uh, different time the port address gets changed. So, at different instances it takes a different port. Uh, so, this is a demo about the uh, UDP server. Uh, and the UDP client uh, which is the possibly the simplest form of the socket programming. Uh, we will share the code with you, uh, we will uh, uh, request you to browse through the code run it your own machine and see uh, what is happening and uh, understand it more detail. So, in the next class uh, we will show you the demo about the TCP server TCP client and uh, some variants of uh, TCP server and the TCP client. Thank you all for attending the class.